these movies really don't make much sense at all and it's a litty titty time oh god i'm just having flashbacks to the goblin king i hated that movie so much hey guys it's eliza from eliza has no clue if you're new to my channel welcome um i usually do videos about lifestyle today's gonna be different today i am ranking every single direct to video scooby-doo movie uh you know kind of, kind of like a disclaimer this isn't the original scooby-doos this is not um uh and the animated tv series none of that these are just the direct to video movies that hannah barbana hannah blah, 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 um makes um, they usually come out with like two of them every single year. I didn't even know they were still making them until I heard that they were remaking or like making another or like a sequel to the Zombie Island one, which is one that I watched a lot as a kid. And so my interest was sparked. I had seen a girl uh, do a video about watching every single Barbie movie and ranking them. And you know, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do a similar thing where I rank every single directed video Scooby Doo movie. So that's what we're doing today. If you're curious about like how I watched all of these, I made it my mission at the beginning of the semester to watch every single one um, and I got super sick and I ended up finishing a little bit early um, because I had so much free time on my hands when I was sick and I just watched a bunch of Scooby Doo movies. It was insane. If you want to do this yourself, I don't know why you would want to because some of them are so awful. Some of them are just terrible. Just terrible like awful no no I don't I, I'm like no some of them are really really bad and I will talk about them I will rant about them um uh but if you want to do this what I recommend you doing is either watch them illegally on um but what I ended up doing was paying for a Hannah Barbera Hannah Barbera subscription on Amazon Prime and I think like over half of them are on that and then just renting all the other ones is what I did so uh, yeah I watched every single one actually I really didn't watch every single one I did not watch the direct-to-video Lego movies and I did not watch the Scooby-Doo puppet movie because I don't hate myself um First of all, I want to give you a little bit of backstory on these direct-to-video Scooby-Doo movies. Um, there is like a canon Scooby-Doo universe, essentially, but there are so many plot holes because different directors go in different directions. Like there's some movies that are like supernatural, ghosts are real, and there's some movies where like it's just a white dude in a mask, um, which is my preferred type of villain uh, because those are more realistic types of villains. Anyways, so uh, there are a lot of different like almost like different universes and you can like group these movies into eras the first one came out and i believe in 1998 that is the first direct-to-video home movie and i believe that was zombie island um and then from there on they had like different ones like cyber chase was one that i loved as a kid like so much and then there were just a tons and uh starting around like 2008 they started making like one or two every single year because I'm assuming the cost of animation went down and uh you know the profits went up um so there are tons there are crossovers between like John Cena and then there's one about Kiss it's like crazy like how many different crossovers there are some of them are good some of them are bad anyways I just wanted to give like a brief description of like the types of movies I'm reviewing because I'm not looking at the original cartoons. If you want me to look at the original cartoons, I can. I've watched all of them already. So I'm crazy. Anyways, we're going to get started with the worst one. The worst. And I have like this entire spreadsheet that I'll like, I guess I'll post below. Um, yeah. So the worst one, in my opinion, was Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. I hated this. I hated this so much. It was like a musical, but not a musical. And it was this confusing story about just Shaggy and Scooby and then Fred, Velma, and Daphne were like over here. And Shaggy and Scooby were like in the supernatural universe and Fred and Velma and Freddy were not. And I didn't really like the gang being split up. I don't like that. It makes me sad. I want them all together. Um there's like this fairy character and my main gripe with this movie is that there are so many celebrity cameos it was like 
the production team was like how many celebrities we can we get in this one movie so we can like maximize our profits like Jay Leno is a guest star in it um he plays like a pumpkin it's really weird um I'll read a brief synopsis from uh from wiki because I was too lazy to write my own um, so the Mystery Inc. gang visits a Halloween carnival on Halloween night when a magician, the amazing Krutsky, voiced by Wayne Knight, refuses to allow Scooby to see his show and he and Shaggy retaliate, exposing Krutsky as a fraud. Um, and then he's the villain. It just gets really complicated and convoluted and they have to go, like, save a fairy. I didn't like it. I had to put closed captioning on because my brain was just like, this is the worst thing you have ever watched and you need to make it more entertaining for you. So in order to pay attention, I turned the volume off and I just read the words. It was so bad. I hated it. I hated it so much. Anyways, next one is Scooby-Doo and the Mask of the Blue Falcon. When I saw this one, I was really excited because as a kid, I watched Scooby-Doo, but I also watched a lot of, a lot of other different um vintage cartoons like um the blue falcon and dog wonder i love that just as much as i love scooby-doo and in this particular scooby-doo universe because this is a much later movie than the previous one i talked about it's like a lot of like the blue falcon and dog wonder are like on a tv show and the scooby gang watches that tv show or watch that tv show but now it's getting remade and like the blue falcon is kind of like this batman figure and so it was like this really campy you know blue falcon and now there's like this new edgy blue falcon and then the old blue falcon is like mad because he's not getting any money anymore and he's crazy it's just it's insane and i think i would have liked this if they kind of put blue falcon and dog wonder in the movie as equals to scooby-doo instead of making them like celebrities and like they were on a tv show and then like that kind of like that they weren't real people like i would have preferred it if they were like real and you know the two the scooby yang and the blue falcon like interacted anyways the next one is scooby-doo and frank and creepy I was really excited when I first started watching this because what they did with this one is they pulled in the vintage cartoons and there are several movies that do this. They pulled in the vintage cartoons and they related them to the present. Scooby-Doo. Um, and I thought that it was really interesting. So when I was first watching, I was like, wow, this is really, really interesting. I like this. I think this is a new twist. And then they lost me because they kind of pit Velma and Daphne against each other. And I'm like, okay, so you're pitting the woman against each other. I see how it is. And I want to just tell you, I was looking at who directed all of these films. There was only been two directed by a woman um and those were the most recent two every single other one has been directed by a man and it shows um so fred not fred velma and daphne are like pit against each other and then like velma's like mad that she's pretty and then daphne is mad that velma's smart and i'm like you're both pretty and you're both smart like what what I'm very confused. And then they made it even worse because the whole plot of the movie is that each member of the Scooby gang loses something that they love and value. Like Fred loses the mystery machine, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like this is a very interesting plot line. And then um, Shaggy and Scooby lose like their hunger. And then Daphne gets fat. And they act like getting fat is the worst thing that could happen to Daphne. And I was just like, hmm. as a little girl, if I had watched this, this would have given me such severe issues. Like, this female figure in a cartoon that I look up to is now fat, and that's bad. So if I'm fat, that's bad. And so that made me really, really, like, really angry with whoever wrote this script. Um, there was one moment when Fred was like, oh, I don't even notice a difference. And I'm like, okay i i see that's coming from a positive place that fred likes daphne just as much um before as after um but uh also i feel like that's pretty like 
he doesn't even acknowledge the fact that she's fat now. And, uh, it's just like, he doesn't notice. Uh, it's weird. Um, and the reason she gets fat is because she's like hypnotized and they put her in a fat suit and then all of a sudden, like the fat suit pops and she's skinny again and everything is better. And I'm like, this is going to give some people some severe issues. And so I had some pause with this movie. Like the plot was okay. I thought the villains were really cool. And it ended up being like all the villains in the movie were villains from like the old cartoons, which I really liked. But like the whole like pitting Daphne and Velma against each other and making Daphne fat and acting like it's the worst thing that ever happened to her really pissed me off. Especially as someone who's like, like I'm not skinny. Like I don't pretend to be skinny. Y'all see me right now. I'm in a like, this is the size that I am. And it makes me really mad that they're like, like they could have done so much better and they just failed. Okay, next movie is Scooby-Doo Shaggy Showdown. And this one wasn't super bad or anything like that. It was just, it was just very forgettable. Um, there was like a rip off. They essentially ripped off like Maddie B, you know, that, like, kid rapper that was, like, popular a couple of years back when they, like, made this movie. It was, like, this kid that was, like, a pop singer that rapped, and he was, like, rapping at this rodeo, and, like, Scooby-Doo got him over his fear of horses. It, it was, it's weird. But the plot is that Shaggy, like, took, like, a DNA test or something like that, and he's 100% that bitch. No. Um, Shaggy took a DNA test, and he met, like, one of his distant relatives, and he goes and visits their dude ranch, and they're being haunted, of course, by the ancestor of Shaggy, and Shaggy looks a lot like this ancestor, and everyone thinks that Shaggy's a ghost, and yeah, um, yeah. One thing about this movie is that they, they, it's about the Old West, but they don't mention Native Americans. I feel like they could have done better. That's another thing about this whole franchise, like, looking back, a lot of it's very culturally insensitive. So, I'm gonna point that out. When I, when I see it, I'm gonna point it out, because it makes me mad. Like, even though I love Scooby-Doo, like, it has flaws. Anyways, moving on. Scooby-Doo and Stage Fright. Okay, this, this movie is actually, <laughs> I thought it was so funny, but it was so bad. It was one of those movies, like, I laughed at, because it was so bad. Um, and in it, it's essentially like a parody of The Voice. So Fred and Daphne are singers. And so they go and they're on the show. And uh, yeah, there's other contestants. They're all wacky characters. And they're being haunted by a phantom. Like it's essentially a ripoff of The Phantom of the Opera. But it's like the, the voice and not the opera. And it's not the voice. It's something called Talent Star. There's this one character, I think her name's Brittany, and she's supposed to be a child singer, and she sings this hilariously inappropriate song. I will insert clips and in all of its glory right now. It's the funniest fucking thing in the entire fucking world. Like, it's so inappropriate. song was so catchy like I watched this movie with my boyfriend and we were singing it for like three weeks it was hilarious I loved it yeah I thought it was super funny um it just like the plot wasn't very good it was definitely like you know like a lot of these movies are ripoffs of different uh, movies like they steal their plots like straight up like none of these plots are original like honestly nothing's original even Shakespeare stole shit but like that's not like an excuse for it anyways okay moving on um the Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the 13th Ghost um this is another instance of 
Scooby-Doo, bringing back different iterations of like past, like the franchise in the past. So if you didn't know, there's like a lesser known Scooby-Doo cartoon called like The Curse of the Thirteen Ghosts and it's like Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, and Daphne with Sc Scrappy-Doo and this other character Flim Flam who never shows up in the universe again. Um, like hunting down these searching ghosts. And I'd watched it, or watched part of it before. Um, and it's pretty good. Uh, but it's like one of those series that's not as talked about as like the original series or like even the Scooby-Doo movies that were made in the 70s, which I'm not including in these direct-to-video movies. I can do an entirely different video about those if you'd like me to. I appreciated that they're banking on nostalgia because like I'm a nostalgic bitch. Like I know I am. Um, but it just wasn't super memorable. So in the original, like, 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, there's a character called Vincent Van Gogh, and he's kind of like Charlie to Charlie's Angels, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and so the ghost is let out, and they have to go find it, and this time it's the whole Scooby gang. And the funniest part about this movie is, um, the gang, like, trying to reconcile, like, that Fred and Thelma were entirely not there for this series and that they even mentioned that like who the fuck is Scrappy Doo like none of them remember Scrappy Doo apparently I don't even know why um which honestly I appreciate because Scrappy Doo is probably the most annoying Scooby Doo character out there hot take hot take they even meet Flim Flam along the way so you know what it was like pretty solid um but like not super memorable and I really didn't like how it ended with Velma trying to like debunk everything because in these later Scooby-Doo movies like ghosts aren't real um but in the previous Scooby-Doo movies ghosts are real <laughs> plot holes so that was my biggest gripe with that movie is I just really don't like it when they try to explain the way the existence of ghosts. I don't see any problem with each Scooby-Doo movie like being its own separate like kind of mini universe. Like I don't think they all need to be connected. Next movie is Scooby-Doo Moon Monster Madness. And this was actually like really cool to me because it was a complete rip off of the movie Alien but like dumbed down for kids. So I thought it was like super funny. Um, the film opens with like Daphne trying to pass her driver's test and then they get like a call to, you know, like now they're going up to the moon because this eccentric millionaire was like, we're going to take people to the moon. So they go up to the moon with like a bunch of astronauts and then this NFL player and a scientist and a journalist, they all go up and they are confronted by this moon monster who, um, yeah, um... The, it's essentially alien. Another thing I didn't like about this movie, it wasn't as bad as Frank and Creepy, but they pit Daphne and Vilma against each other again. Like, one of the major, like, it centers around Daphne and Vilma, you know, like, arguing because Daphne got a higher score on her space test and Vilma, and Vilma's mad that Daphne's smart and pretty. And I'm like, okay, I get that you're trying to ki teach kids, like, a message about, like, friendship, but, like, you're kind of missing the point. Like, can't you just make them friends and, you know, they're both pretty and they're both smart? I don't. I just... Also, it's a little bit dark for a kid's movie, which, like, as an adult watching it, I liked, but I could see like a little kid like maybe five or six watching this and being really scared of the moon monster but if you're an adult that doesn't matter uh moving on scooby-doo and the return to zombie island so i have a feeling that a lot of people are gonna be mad that i put this so low on my list um but i have several gripes with it uh the plot like really didn't make sense and i feel like the reason i'm ranking it so high right now is because it's banking on like nostalgia for me because zombie island was a movie that i watched a lot as a kid um so uh in the later scooby-doo movies the ones that they're making like essentially like right now it's like chronological and they all build on the previous one so this movie picks up at the moment where like Fred like he doesn't have a mystery machine the mystery machine's lost and gone and dead um and the gang gets like a free trip it's given by Elvira 
funnily enough, which I actually enjoyed the addition of Elvira because I love her. Um, and they get like a tropical vacation. So they go to this tropical vacation and it ends up not being a tropical vacation. It ends up being a trip to Moonscar Island, which is where the original zombie island thing happened. Um, one thing that confused me about this movie is that the geography wasn't clear. And when you're watching a kid's movie and you all of a sudden realize that the geography is kind of completely unclear, it would like really takes me out of it. Um, I think that's something that's so easy to fix. Um, and when you're creating a script, you need to do a lot of world building. And I feel like this script was written really fast. Um, uh, so in the original Zombie Island, it's based in, like, New Orleans, and they, like, take a ferry out to the bayou, and in this one, there's no mention of the bayou, um, there's, like, plastic palm trees that are trying to make the Scooby Gang feel like it is, like, a tropical island, essentially they're being tricked into thinking that this bayou swamp place is a tropical island, and... Velma, Freddy, and Daphne have, like, all agreed to not talk about, like, mystery stuff because they're on vacation, um, and then that's, like, I feel like two-thirds of the movie is just them being like, oh, we can't talk about it because we're on vacation, and it just annoys me so much. At the end of it, Velma completely, like, tries to debunk the zombies originally because in this version, the zombies, like, aren't real. Um, but the cat people, I think, are real. Um, but Velma, like, debunks all of it. She's like, oh, we are just breathing in gas, and that's why. And so, like, I really didn't appreciate that they were, like, debunking all of this, like, canon Scooby-Doo stuff that was essentially established in 1999, 1998. And so, like, I was just like, mm, please don't do that, because that was my childhood, and you're making me sad. And I think they should have known that people like me who are obsessed with Scooby-Doo would go back and watch this and this was really disappointing to me. I think like, a kid who watched this now would like the movie but like as an adult who like really really loved that like the first original movie I was just really disappointed. Moving on to one of the collaborations between Scooby-Doo and like a celebrity is Scooby-Doo and WWE Curse of the Speed Demon. So I don't even have a good grasp on what WWE is. Like I know it's like people fighting each other I think anyways but this isn't people fighting each other this is people like racing cars but it's the people it's it's weird I, I don't even know I don't even know I, I don't know um well to the other WWE one which was with John Cena so I guess they couldn't get John Cena back and so they are like collaborating with The Undertaker who's like another WWE star um and they're like racing cars and Shaggy and Scooby end up racing a car with the undertaker and they're trying to beat like the mcmahons and um uh, i'm talking about it like i hated it but i actually didn't mind it i thought it was pretty good and pretty solid and i can see how someone who's like eight or nine who really enjoys wwe would like really like this movie um i thought the plot was pretty solid it was one of those typical scooby-doo formulas where it ended up being like the white dude and the mask it was literally <laughs> it was literally a white dude in a mask <laughs> um and those are my favorite scooby-doos um because i i don't know i feel like that's some like a cultural phenomenon in Scooby-Doo is that all of the villains end up being like old white men in masks and I like feel like personally those are usually the people who are doing like, the most atrocious things like the people who are responsible for like crime like I, I think are typically you know white men in masks I'll take um Anyway, so I, I pretty much, I really enjoyed the movie, and I think that from here on out is, you know, the good movies, or the movies that I actually enjoyed. Moving on is Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery, and this is the one with John Cena, and this movie is such a meme. It is so funny. I enjoyed this one so much just because, like, it's John Cena and Scooby-Doo, and both of them are just like walking memes. The plot is like, you know, Scooby and Shaggy win this all expenses paid stay at WWE City to watch WrestleMania after beating the hardest level of this video game. And like upon arrival, the mystery machine crashes and then they meet John Cena and his trainer and uh, yeah. And then from there, there's like this monster. You know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty standard. Um, 
Uh, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was really fucking funny. Next one is Scooby-Doo and the Samurai Sword. And this was one of the last ones I remember watching as a kid when I was maybe 9 or 10. Um, looking back, I think this movie is pretty culturally insensitive. Um, the people who directed it were white. And I feel like that was a mistake. Um, I think most of the people who voice characters in this are also white. I feel like that's also a mistake because they're doing like these accents. That I Anyways, I watched this as a kid. So I feel like the reason it's ranked so high is because of nostalgia. Um, Daphne is in this like martial arts competition. And the gang travels to Japan. And they meet um all these different people who are competing and they're like oh my god oh my god and then all of a sudden this like ghost samurai attacks <laughs> and uh scooby-doo and uh shaggy need to find the scroll anyways uh <laughs> uh it's so hard explaining these plots because honestly none of the plots make sense anyways moving on is chill out scooby-doo this is another of the ones that i remember watching when i was like eight or nine and this was like when i was like oh I'm too old for scooby-doo but i like really wasn't i was still super into it um it centers on scooby-doo um and shaggy like needing to meet up with fred and daphne and velma in paris but they like took the wrong flight or like the flights were messed up and they end up in the himalayas and they are faced with the abominable snowman and then fred daphne and velma come and save them but they all get like you know entrapped in this mystery and they uh, end up meeting dale who is from uh, another Scooby-Doo movie and I really like Dale because he's like this hippie and he's like believes in Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and so he's like really fun. I like Dale um, and I think he's probably the, my favorite part of this entire movie and he's like a radio show host in this and I think that's very entertaining. Anyways the moving on is Scooby-Doo and the Gourmet Ghost and this is another of their collaborations and they collaborate with several celebrity chefs namely Bobby Flay. So the gang go and and uh, visit Fred's uncle, who apparently is Bobby Flay. <laughs> Anyways, we we uh, um, we do not further discuss this for the rest of the movie, essentially. And so they um, go and they tour this like resort that Bobby has built. That was like a Revolutionary War um like museum or not a museum house that was like significant and stuff. And then there's this ghost like this red ghost that comes and starts haunting them um and they have to um you know figure out who the ghost is pretty standard it also ends up being an old white man in a mask um this film made me very hungry uh i was super hungry the entire time i was watching this because the food looks so good moving on is scooby-doo and the alien invaders and i know people are gonna get mad at me because i'm ranking this one so low but i just did not i loved this one so much as a kid i loved it i loved it however looking back i don't think the plot is as strong as my five-year-old self thought it was <laughs> Um, this is one of the movies where it is canon and aliens and ghosts and monsters exist. Um, and the gang visits New Mexico and Shaggy and Scooby are abducted and their research, they like are expecting these scientists are like make, doing all these abductions and like scaring people off and they see a jackalope don't know how that fits in there looking back um and scooby and shaggy meet crystal and her golden retriever and uh shaggy falls head over heels for crystal and 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 crystal and her golden retriever end up being aliens which is super weird and like honestly looking back it doesn't really fit with the plot and it comes straight out of nowhere there's not really many i don't know came out of nowhere for me and the whole jackalope thing that I loved as a kid didn't really make sense and was never explained uh yeah so I still love the movie but I am ranking it lower than some of the other ones and I'm gonna, people are gonna be mad about the next one I'm ranking pretty low which is Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost and this takes place in Salem um 
uh, after Ben Ravencroft, a famous horror writer of whom Velma is a huge fan, assists her in the mystery gang in solving a case at a museum. He invites them to his hometown. Okay, Ben, so it's not Salem, but it's essentially like a parody of Salem. Um, when they arrive, they find the town has converted to a tourist attraction, um, complete with replicas, and... Um, Apparently there's like a ghost of Sarah, Sarah Ravencroft. And Sarah is a Wiccan, not a witch, and she's never trying to harm spirits. And Ben is like, Arr! she's not a bad person. And the whole town is like, she was a witch. Um, and like she starts haunting, um, or like the ghost starts haunting the town, and then the people behind the attacks are caught. And then all of a sudden, there's this huge plot shift where like ghosts are real, and Ben Ravencroft like summons Sarah from his book this book and then there's like ghosts are real and it's like well this I came out of nowhere um and then Scooby-Doo traps Ben and Sarah back into the book uh isn't that how people die I don't know um one of my favorite parts about this is that the hex girls are there and the hex girls are icons and stars and living legends and this is when they were first introduced so i think that's the, probably the best part about this movie um other than that i felt like the plot really wasn't strong and there was a lot of plot holes and yeah um how far i have come i am now criticizing scooby-doo movies i am a literature major what am i doing um anyways moving on is scooby-doo batman the brave and the bold and i really like this movie uh, i will say i feel like it's more of a batman movie than a scooby-doo movie um it's very it's a lot darker than the scooby-doo movies uh there are different batman characters like aquaman and then i can't even remember like black canary and a couple of others the joker's there the penguin's there uh the riddler is a huge part of this movie um I thought this movie was really good but it also like it was really dark like they like, the whole Arkham Asylum thing like it's a very dark Scooby-Doo movie but I did enjoy it I enjoyed it a lot um essentially um Scooby-Doo and the gang are inducted into the mystery analyst of Gotham and then they are charged with uh solving a case and this case ends up being one of like the ones that Batman couldn't solve and um it has to do with the like what is it the red the red the crimson something red yeah it's pretty good I liked it I thought the costume choices were amazing because um in the film the entire gang at the very end ends up dressing up in like the costumes of uh like Batman's past sidekicks which I thought was pretty cool um but yeah it was more of a Batman movie than a Scooby-Doo movie because it kind of departs from the traditional format um and also in this one it is like canon that um the, the supernatural is real essentially and next is Aloha Scooby-Doo which is another one that I really loved as a kid and also another one that I think has some plot holes in it um that I did not dress as a five-year-old uh shame on me I know I had a very poor literary criticism at that age so there's this surf contest the whole movie centers around and there's this guy named Manu who's like the big stud he's gonna win the surf competition and all of a sudden his girlfriend's kidnapped by these cheeky monsters I thought this movie was really good even though there were some plot holes with like Manny's girlfriend and like where did she go? Why weren't people concerned? I am confused. Uh, I feel like this should have been a bigger deal. But you know, when I was five, I wasn't worried about the social um, implications of not looking for a missing woman. Next movie is Scooby Doo Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery. And I think the reason I scored this movie so high is because I really like Kiss's music and the music in this particular movie is awesome. Anyways, the gang goes to Kiss World, which is like this Kiss themed amusement park, to see this Halloween concert. And also, uh, Daphne like tells the gang, like, oh, we're there to solve a mystery. They asked us to solve a mystery, but they didn't. And they just show up and they start investigating. Uh, like they weren't asked and they get like apprehended by a uh, security and you're like you're not supposed to be here and we're like oh mm, well mm, mm. um and Daphne's like oh sorry I was, I was lying because I really just wanted to see Star Child so in this movie Daphne and Star Child are like 
kind of a thing, which is a little bit problematic because I think Daphne is like 17 or 18 and Star Child in real life is like 55. Anyways, we just completely ignore that for the entire movie and she fawns over this 55 year old man that could be her father. Uh, in the entire movie, Fred is like super jealous and he's talking about this band that he likes called the Ascot Five, which I honestly think is the funniest part of the movie. They even mentioned the Ascot Five like their music and they have like clips of the Ascot Five and I literally fucking died. It's so fucking fun. You don't see me acting ridiculous over my favorite group, the Ascot Five, do you? Oh no. no. Don't tug my ascot. Don't pull my ascot. It's not as gone. No, baby. You can't have my ascot because girl, girl, it's mine. Fred, please. I'm just saying, I think they're twice the band Kiss is. And uh, so they're tasked with like solving this mystery. And like what the problem is, is there's this crimson witch that's out there terrorizing the patrons of Kiss World. And uh, and they end up being dragged into this alternate universe in which Kiss are like aliens and are there to protect Earth and um, yeah. And they have to do that through rock and roll. It's very cheesy. I like the music. I think it's pretty good and I actually really recommend it. I think it's one of the better like Scooby-Doo crossovers between Scooby-Doo and like a celebrity. I think it's probably my favorite one. Moving on is Scooby-Doo Where's My Mummy which is a complete rip off of The Mummy but you're not surprised because Scooby-Doo does that all the time. I think every single Scooby-Doo movie is like a rip off of a different better movie. Um, so they go to Egypt to visit Thelma, who's an archaeologist, who um, is being, uh, you know, pressured by another, like, archaeologist group to, like, give up because, like, it's their, it's their work now. They get to investigate the pyramid, but Velma and her um, uh, fellow archaeologists are like, no way! And, um, and the movie... Um, spoiler alert, Velma and, uh, the other archaeologist poses mummies to, like, scare off these other archaeologists, um, and this QB gang has no idea, and so they're, like, fighting off these mummies that are actually, like, Velma and, um, uh, the other archaeologists that were originally at the site, um, and then they, Scooby and Shaggy get dragged into this cult, um, and they expose the cult, and the Nile floods, these movies really don't make much sense at all, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, I honestly really just enjoyed the animation. I thought it was a beautiful movie. I loved all the relics. Um, and, uh, the, I don't know. I just really, really like this movie. I think it's probably mostly nostalgia. Yeah, it's probably mostly nostalgia. Um, but I think it's definitely one of the more solid Scooby-Doo movies. Scooby-Doo and the Music of the Vampire. Okay, so there's two, I guess really three if you count the Kiss movie, Scooby-Doo mu musicals, and that's like the Goblin King, which is like a lot of music, and then Music of the Vampire, which I feel like Music of the Vampire is like the only like true musical, or at least it's the only good one, in which the characters sing. Oh god, I'm just having flashbacks to the Goblin King. I hated that movie so much. So the film begins with like an introduction where you like song, which I really appreciate. And it's, um, you know, it's pretty decent music. There are some bops. There are some bops. We're finally on vacation and going someplace new. What's the relaxation? It's all we're gonna do. I don't want no zombies or kooks. My friends were finally done with all them goblins and spooks that kept us on the run. We're gonna be Um, and they go and they visit this like vampire festival and then all of a sudden there's this real musical vampire and he's attacking the town and he wants Daphne to be the vampire bride and oh no! Um, anyways, uh, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I really enjoyed the music. I am a sucker for a musical and honestly, <laughs> Broadway should, Broadway could never. Broadway could never. Yes, you and I were meant for glory. And something greater than this drab little world that you see. And who'd have thought that later 
You and I would have this date, a date with destiny. I can't believe you'd think I'd buy that. Come on, I've heard this all before. It's just a line I'm not naive. I really can't believe you'd try that. I've got to say, you must be nuts to think that's something I believe. You lay it on there kind of heavy. With all this talk of something special, so what could it be? What if I say I know a way to immortality? Really? I'm just kidding. Broadway could absolutely do so much better. But I thought this was really, really funny and a good movie. Moving on is Scooby-Doo and the Legend of the Fantastore. I remember watching this one with my boyfriend. And I was like, this was going to be such shit. This is going to be terrible. Um, essentially, I was wrong. It was really good. I really liked it a lot. It's kind of a ripoff of Jurassic Park a little bit but instead of like actual dinosaurs they're ghost dinosaurs there's even velociraptors like a lot of the art looks very similar to jurassic world um so they travel to a remote stay at la serena spa in new mexico to relax after shaggy has this like horrific experience and then shaggy ends up being like hypnotized to never like be afraid anymore and he like faces it off with his biker gang it's really like interesting <laughs> um and uh yeah um there's a dinosaur that shows up it's haunting the entire place and, like tearing down um the town and terrorizing people and um fred daphne velma and scooby-doo and shaggy uh debunk it and it turns out to be um people who want to develop the land which like I really enjoy these kinds of plots where it's like pretty realistic villains like people who um are like really like want to develop real estate and are trying to steal the land and buy it for cheaper um through haunting I think that's a pretty solid plot um it's a very formulaic movie but I think it's pretty good um moving on Scooby-Doo and the Monster of Mexico I love this movie so much but um I don't know a lot about Mexican culture. Um, I have a feeling that they get a lot of this stuff wrong in the movie about the Day of the Dead because I don't think they portray it respectfully enough because I know it's a very like solemn, um, serious day for Mexican families. Um, so looking back, that's, it's one of the more culturally insensitive movies. Um, essentially, Fred gets invited by his pen pal to go visit this resort and they go and it's being haunted by the chupacabra which they kind of term as the Mexican Bigfoot but after looking it up the chupacabra is kind of like something different than Bigfoot um so I think they really Americanized this and they took a lot of liberties with it um and Scooby-Doo and the gang have to debunk this monster um and I think one of the big reasons why I swear this story is again nostalgia. But I just remember watching this movie time and time again as a kid. And even watching it now, I think it's one of the better movies. Like, less, less there are not really any plot holes. Um, they make a lot of big statements about like capitalism, actually, which I think is so funny. Like, the, there's this huge franchise about this talking dog, and a lot of it is just like commentary on capitalism, which I think is hilarious. Uh, moving on, Scooby Doo Pirates Ahoy. This is another movie that I watched so much as a kid. Fred's family like surprises him with this mystery cruise, and they're all having fun. Um, but like the, the cruise is like too easy they keep figuring out all of the mysteries too quick and the rest of the crew gets like really upset with them and then suddenly they're attacked by pirates and our, the ship is taken over and then the Fred and the gang have to um go find his mom because his mom has been like taken centers are around the Bermuda Triangle and all of the like going on so there's this beautiful opening sequence of like planes disappearing and like different like ships going down um in fact i think this is one of my favorite opening sequences the opening sequences for a lot of scooby-doo movies like honestly are really beautiful um and the animation is really wonderful um and yes moving on scooby-doo camp scare um i posted on my instagram story a while ago about how i was watching every single scooby-doo movie and someone commented oh my gosh scooby-doo camp scare slaps love that movie and i think i was a little bit too old to watch it when this came out and after re-watching this i was like wow that's a good movie they kind of play off of a lot of different horror movies that center around camp and so the gang goes to 
to Fred's old camp and their camp counselors and they only have like three kids because the entire camp has been uh, evacuated essentially because there's this axe wielding maniac that's running around terrorizing people and there's an arrival camp because they're in Camp Little Moose and there's Camp Big Moose and um they kind of like go investigate Camp Big Moose because they're like "Ooh, it's them they're trying to like play a prank on us but it's not it's something much more sinister ends up having to do with a mob um once again the villain ends up being a white dude in a mask oh, I love that um uh, yeah, but it's definitely one of the better Scooby-Doo movies. Um, the plot is really solid with this one. Like, there really are not any plot holes, and, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. There are, I think, three different monsters. There's an actual really maniac, there's, like, a lake monster, and there's this, like, screaming banshee that haunts the canyons. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, moving on is Big Top Scooby-Doo, and this movie, I remember sitting down with my boyfriend, and I was like, this is going to be terrible. We're going to hate this, but we're going to have fun watching this. And I was so surprised by this movie. It centers around circus life. And I was so afraid that they were going to like be like, oh my gosh, elephants are leaving the circus. That was so sad. But like, because you know, like a lot of different circuses have been um, under fire for like not treating their animals well. Um, but in this, they address that and they talk about it. And they're like, well, this circus is getting rid of all of their animals because um, of the laws and you can't really treat them well when you're constantly on the road. And all the animals are being donated to, I think, like the San Diego Zoo or something like that. And I was like, wow, they really address that in a very positive light. Um, and essentially the movie revolves around the gang investigating this werewolf jewel thief that seems to follow the circus around. I don't, I was so shocked about how much I liked this movie. And once again, the villain ends up being a white dude. Uh, why are all my favorites like this? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. And I was very shocked about how much I liked it. And the statements that were made about monetary um, gain and uh, animal rights were actually very profound. Um, I feel like the people who create Scooby-Doo are pretty liberal. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, moving on is Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island. I loved this movie as a kid. It was so, so good. Yeah. Um, and this iteration of Scooby-Doo, um, they're, like, adults. They're not teenagers. And, like, all of them have, like, real big kid jobs. Um, which I actually like. I like the Scooby gang older than teens. Because I feel like that gives you more liberty to play around with um how much like money they can have to like go to these exotic places and solve mysteries um so yeah uh the gang gets back together after like going their separate ways and they go and investigate this bayou island that's haunted by a ghost and zombies and cat people and it's a litty titty time um yeah it's super good there are some places where i'm just like that happened um but I think that's the case with every single Scooby-Doo movie I think this is pretty solid but it was not my favorite one of my favorites is Scooby-Doo in the Legend of the Vampire and I think the reason why I like this one so much is because it has the hex girls in it and the hex girls are icons living legends love them anyways they take a trip to Australia to see this music festival and um there's this beautiful sequence of them like roaming Australia and getting in all kinds of different trouble um and they discuss the Yowie Yahoo, which is like this aboriginal vampire um, that's haunting the concert and kidnapping the performers. And the gang poses as performers to get kidnapped. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting movie. I really liked it. Um, I like the music in it because the Hex Girls obviously like the living legends like my icons honestly they're um it's just a very very good movie and i loved it as a kid moving on is scooby Doo and the loch ness monster which is one of my other favorites i love this one i thought i think her name's shannon she's daphne's cousin and she invites the gang over to scotland to um see like the highland games 
and um, hang out and have a good time. But then the Loch Ness Monster comes and uh, rips up Shannon's bow and ruins the games and uh, the gang has to investigate. And the Loch Ness Monster, in the very, very end, because it was people posing as the Loch Ness Monster, but in the very, very end, it ends up being real. And one of my favorite characters in this is Dale, who I mentioned from Chill Out Scooby-Doo. This is his, like, first movie, and he is... I love him. He's just crazy. He has this van that looks like... Um, it, it looks like the Loch Ness Monster. Um, and I think he's so funny, and I love him. He's a lit time. Uh, and the entire movie is just really good. And uh, I appreciated that they had a heroine that had short hair. And so, like, showing, like, different types of femininity. And this is one of those movies where Velma and Daphne are not pitted against each other. You can have a good movie and not have girls fight. Oh, my God. Uh, moving on is the best one. My number one. You've been waiting for it. You knew it was coming. You knew that the best Scooby-Doo movie movie and there are no questions about this and if you don't believe this you're wrong. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. This movie so good so good mixes the old cartoons with the new cartoons and like video games and oh, it's magic. Um, Scooby-Doo and the gang go and visit their friend Eric who is a like, computer genius who's developed this video game that's based on them and then they get trapped in the video game because the cyber monster like warps them into the game and then follows them and they're being chased by the cyber monster and they have to go through various levels until they get to the final level and in this level their old selves are in the, the game so they're like in their new fancy like 2000 era clothes and they see themselves in like their vintage like 60s 70s clothes and uh they interact they're like mirroring each other it's like a good time and they end up like splitting up like Fred's like all right gang let's split up but they split up with like the same like themselves and they go investigate and it's just it's just it's just so good um and the uh villain ends up being one of eric's um friends who was jealous of his success so it was a good movie so good the best if you think that i'm wrong you're wrong because i'm right like the plot is just so good and so original like the, out of all of these movies like please tell me if I'm wrong like maybe they stole this plot and like I'm just stupid but like out of all the movies I by far think this is the most original I love how they mix the new and the old I think that's so smart um anyways that was the review of every single direct to Scooby-Doo movie actually every not every single because I skipped over the Lego movies and I did not watch the puppet movie because I don't hate myself if you want me to do reviews on those I will but like I don't hate myself so I'm not gonna do it unless y'all want me to um I hope you found this movie entertaining uh if you're like as invested in Scooby-Doo as I am please sound off in the comments below and rank them yourselves at least like your top five um I'm always open to hearing criticism like I know I was joking throughout this movie I was like my opinions are right and yours are wrong but like I'd love to hear your reasons for why you hate or love various movies that I have mentioned I will stick by the fact that the goblin king is the worst one i hate that movie so fucking much it's so bad um but uh you know i'd love to hear why you love it i guess you must hate yourself if you love it anyways so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it's a very big departure from my usual content which is usually relying around like hair and makeup so this is a huge departure for me anyways i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one and also i'm sorry this video was super long okay bye bye